Hey YouTube, welcome back to Dark Moon Metals. In today's video, I have a little bit of a problem. A friend of mine dropped this off, and he wants me to cut a channel in here that's going to be about 150 thousandths deep. Uh, I'm not even really sure what this is for, but because it's tapered, going in both directions, I need to spin this thing between centers. Uh, apparently that's how this was made in the first place. Now, the center for a lathe is usually something made out of hardened steel. Um, I only have tailstock centers for my lathe. Now these tailstock centers have a taper to them. I believe it's a Morse 2 taper and it'll lock in the tailstock really, really nice. But I can't use a tailstock center that's hardened inside of my chuck. So the ideal solution would be to have a hardened headstock center, which I don't. So how can we get by? How can we get the job done? Well, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a piece of hex stock. Now this is regular mild steel. Uh, I'm going to cut this in half. And I'm using hex stock because I have a three jaw chuck. And the way this is going to lock in here, it's going to be perfect for a centering device. Uh, I'm going to come in, I'm going to face it, I'm going to put a point on it similar to this. I'm not going to harden it. Uh, I, I don't know if this even can be hardened. I'm not sure what kind of steel this is. But I need this to work for 10 minutes tops. And even if it destroys itself in the process where it can't be used again, it's still worth it to me to get the job done. So don't look at this as a way to, uh, to actually make a headstock center. This is a quick and dirty, get me out of a bind kind of thing. As you can see, the hex stock having six sides fits very well inside of a three jaw chuck. So I'm relying on this to create a very accurate center point. First thing I'm gonna do is face the bar off. I've got the hex stock in the chuck, and I'm going to start by facing it off. Uh, always remember, have your safety glasses on whenever you're using any kind of power tool. Let me zoom in for you a little bit here. And let's get cracking. The next thing I'm going to do is come in and round off a portion of this. I don't need to have it hex all the way to the end. So let's turn this down. Now that I've got this far, I want to come in with a different tool that's got the taper that I need to make the point. So after about 10 minutes of machining and a little bit of work with a file, just to clean up the edges, this is my makeshift headstock center. So let's mount the part between the two centers and see if we can actually get it to spin and get the job done. So here we are. These are the end results. I have managed to get the shaft suspended between the two centers. Uh, the tailstock center once again being factory made and the headstock center being made by me which uh, believe me I am not bragging about because it's not done uh, I don't believe it's done properly number one I'm not even using the right kind of steel but um, I just needed something to get me through this cut now I had to move the center itself further back in the chuck because if I put it out as far as I wanted it the lathe dog wouldn't reach the chuck and wouldn't engage the jaws now the lathe dog is something that you attach to the shaft that you're trying to spin because spinning in between hardened centers or what should be hardened centers you're going to find that it's going to slip and as soon as you touch the shaft with the tool it's going to stop so that's what the lathe dog does it transfers the power from the jaws to the stock itself so it will rotate 
Now, the only concern that I have right now is this lathe dog is not sitting perfectly straight. It's actually sitting at a slight angle because this is tapered. I may have to shove a small piece of leather in there um, as kind of a cushion so when I tighten this down it'll straighten up, but uh, I'm not going to find that out until I turn on the lathe. So let me hit the power and see if she spins. Hey, look at that. We have liftoff. All right, YouTube, that part is already out of the shop. Now, uh, normally when I get something in, I have a two or three day turnaround time depending on what it is. This particular gentleman, I said, hey, you know, perfect, I can do that, leave it with me, and uh, you can pick it up as early as tomorrow. And he goes, well, I really need it today. So I said, all right, fine, I'll make a deal with you. If you let me film it, because I want to make a quick video, I think this might interest some of the subscribers I have on YouTube, I'll do it for you for no charge. And right away his eyes perked up and he was very agreeable to this sort of thing. So, um, so yeah, that part's already gone. Let's take a look at the chuck, uh, the center itself, and see how that held up. See if I can... Now, oh, there's not a whole lot of light over here. Let me come back under the lathe. There we go. Don't know how well you're going to be able to see that, just because the lighting in here is terrible by the lathe. I can see everything on the lathe fine, I just can't see things uh, on the camera very well. But, um, yeah, there's not a lot of wear on that. I mean, there are wear marks. You wouldn't see that if this was hardened. But, uh, you know, I'm going to hang on to this. Who knows? Maybe it'll come in handy in the future. Okay, folks, I hope you enjoyed the video. Uh, I don't normally shoot random little things like that that come into the shop, but I thought the whole troubleshooting and solution thing might have interested some of you. Uh, it's just some of the day-in, day-out stuff I get around here because I don't have all of the tools I should have for everything that I can use. Um, like the milling machine that I just acquired, I've got next to no end mills. Um, it didn't even come with a vise, I had to get the vise. The lathe, I've st I'm still using all of the old high-speed steel cutting tools that were my grandfather's and uh, you know, I'm, I'm really trying to save up and, and get new tooling for a bunch of stuff, but I'm using what I have to get by and get my work done which is, you know, just trying to be resourceful and thrifty and things like that. Um, I have not been putting a whole lot up on YouTube lately. I've been doing a lot of the same thing. And uh, what I've been working on lately are being able to kind of mass produce the steel roses that I make. Uh, you may have seen the video that I made of the steel rose for my mother. Um, I have started making them just as an effort to get my name out and I'm donating some of them to silent auctions that benefit elementary and middle schools in my area. Uh, one of the ones that I just got done with is this guy right here and I'm quite happy with that, that's all steel. And uh, this one is going to be up for auction at Nathan Hale Middle School. Uh, I believe the auction is taking place on April 2nd. I know a lot of you out there in YouTube land are nowhere near this and won't be able to bid on them. But um, I just wanted to kind of throw that out there and let you know what I'm doing and that even though you might not see me as often as you like, I am still in the shop and I am still staying busy. So um, I'm hoping that I get a few more interesting things coming through the door soon so I could film them and share them with you on YouTube. But until then, uh, I'm going to cut the video here. This has been Jeff at Dark Moon Metals, and I will see you again soon.